Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 13 of season 4 of the F124, my uh, driver career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here at the Circuit Park Zandvoort for the Dutch Grand Prix. Of course, if you missed out on the video that went live a couple of days ago uh, where we went to Belgium, the final race before the summer break, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out as well. And... If you missed out on the video we did yesterday, uh, I really, really enjoyed that one. We compared F124 with iRacing, uh, Automobilista 2, Assetto Corsa, and Race Room to try and tell you guys what is the best F1 sim to give a go in 2024. Yeah, I enjoyed making that video. I think if you guys missed it, you'd love to go back and check it out as well there. But today, yeah, Formula 1 is back from its summer break. We've got 11 races to go between now and the end of the season. A 33-point buffer ahead of Max Verstappen in the Drivers World Championship after, for the first time in a couple of Grand Prix, we actually got a win on the board back in Belgium as well there. So, yeah, really happy with the result we had that weekend. Only the second time this season we have taken the full host of 26 points out of a Grand Prix as well. But as we head into the second half of the campaign, we've got to be really, really careful. We've got to be nice and strategic, nice and sensible. I'm going to try and adopt the Alan Prost approach of trying to do the bare minimum to make sure that we are still leading in the Drivers' World Championship. But this, of course, being Max Verstappen's home Grand Prix, it's a happy hunting ground for the Dutchman. He always seems to find a little bit more pace. Get yourself subscribed if you're new. We're trying to hit 140,000 subs. And yeah, let's do this thing. With partisan support that we rarely see anywhere else on the calendar, there is an incredible atmosphere at Zandvoort. We're setting the grid for the Dutch Grand Prix in qualifying. Well, making our way then into qualifying, we're expecting top times to maybe just sneak into the 107s here. And of course, we learn after the Belgian Grand Prix, yeah, this car definitely is more suited to the high-speed circuits. Zandvoort is not one of those, so yeah, this weekend might be even tougher for us, especially uh, when Verstappen, Red Bull and Aston Martin all seem to have brought some upgrades as well to a venue. I mean, Leclerc might even struggle to see Q3. It still seems mad that he won the season opener in Bahrain and is yet to win again, but it's often been a bit of bad luck for the likes of Alonso and Norris that have kind of kept him P3 in this championship, despite the fact we haven't really called him a title threat in, well, about six or seven Grand Prix at this point. I mean, it only takes a couple of wins to turn his season around. But Leclerc, after winning that world title with Ferrari, really does seem so demotivated in Formula 1 right now. And you can see after his first run, he's saying to P14 then. He's only waiting on us to try and get a lap on the board there. And you can see we're a tenth down on Carlos Sainz as we navigate our way through the middle sector. Hopefully we're going to be able to try and use some of the straight line speed that this car's got and some Italian horsepower as well to carry us back round towards the start finish line there. Try and get the shortest run possible. Avoid the bump. We do an 8.5. Only puts us P6. But ultimately, that's pretty good for this car. Well, despite being in P6, then we're only a tenth of a second above the cutoff line. So we need to try and go out once again then to towards the end of the session. Less than a minute left on the clock. Luckily, this weekend, it is meant to be dry running right the way throughout. So hopefully that should make things a little more predictable. Maybe that'll help us, maybe it'll hinder us. But, you know, I just want to get one more lap on the board just in case we see other AI well, steadily improve their times. What I don't want to do is hit the inside wall uh, through that first corner there as we try and navigate our way through. Oh, come on, nice and easy. Just don't do anything too stupid with the car. There's all the AI then making their way through the final couple of corners. I think we've got yellow flags out. One of the McLarens has been it. So Verstappen now... We'll go top of the board then, so clearly times are improving. Whoa, just a little bit of a snag there over the curb. Could that cost us? By the time we get back round, we're a tenth and a half down. We're below. We're down into P11 then, so this might be a complete deal breaker for us. And as we try and make our way through the final couple of corners, we're down to P14. We've completely messed this up there. So has, I believe, Oscar Piastri in the McLaren car, but he might still be safe. And as we make our way through the final turn, one little moment, one little moment, and we are out in Q2 here in Zanvoort. Well, there we go then. Max Verstappen immediately dips down into the 107s, but he, Fernando Alonso, both McLarens, they've got a huge opportunity now 
to try and take big points out of us in the World Championship. You can see Charles Leclerc barely made it into Q3 by half a tenth a second, and we missed out by less than a tenth of a second as well. That's how razor thin the margins were here in qualifying. The AI have definitely been buffed though inside this game on a Saturday afternoon, but we have got our work cut out. And a bit like we did a few rounds ago, I might just put some fresh components in the pool so we've got a bit more flexibility towards the end of the season. We're on the coast of the North Sea at Zandvoort Circuit, 25 miles outside of Amsterdam. We're all set for the Dutch Grand Prix, a race that the greats have won at, including Jim Clark, who took the biggest trophy home here on four occasions. Four lefts and ten rights make up the 14 corners of the narrow and demanding Zandvoort circuit, with plenty of peaks and valleys over the course of the 2.6 mile lap, which will demand absolute concentration from our drivers here today. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position, and Fernando Alonso completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Stroll, Norris, Perez, Leclerc, Sonoda, Gasly, Russell, Sainz, Hamilton, Oscar Piastri, Ocon, Firestarter, Hulkenberg, Albert, Behrman, Joe, Ricardo, and Frederick Vesti. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Here we are then down on the grid, ready for the Dutch Grand Prix. And annoyingly, no one around us has taken grid penalties. So yeah, we are going to be starting down in P14. Looks like tyre strategy though might be an interesting one here. And if you guys have been keeping up with the My Team career mode I do over on Matt 2 and 2 gameplay, there'll be a link down in the description. Uh, the last couple of races actually, it seems like the overcut is now viable in F124. So that's exactly what we're going to try today. Mediums and then if we can't go to softs, then obviously we'll just go to hard tyres. And I've locked myself in a little bit of extra safety here. But yeah, 36 laps ahead of us from the Dutch Grand Prix. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous for this, especially in the opening laps. It's five red lights down on the grid, though. It's lights out, and away we try and go there. A little bit of wheel spin throughout the first phase, but we do get away fairly clean and tidy in towards turn one. It's down the inside of the Hulk, though. We're just trying to defend our grid position through those first couple of corners. Carlos Sainz looking a little bit ragged through those opening couple of turns and now it's the only real time you can make a move around the outside is on lap one around this venue oh it's Hamilton there just kicks out the back end sorry that's Oscar Piastri even right in front of me luckily he's able to gather it up but we will capitalize there and move up then into P13 Hamilton and Carlos Sainz still battling just up in front so it's a fairly ragged lap one by both of the Mercedes drivers Too much damage. Esteban Ocon, of course. I don't like battling the guy. I mean, I'm not his teammate, so I don't know why he's battling with me that aggressively on lap one. But hopefully that front wing damage isn't going to be the end of the world for us. Might mean that we've got to try and come in for a bit of an early pit stop. But disastrous qualifying and disastrous lap one there is. It's definitely given me more understeer than I would like. Um, but yeah, we've just got to try and stay out there for a few laps. We have definitely not got the pace here as again Esteban Ocon trying to go for a diving manoeuvre there. That time round he'll hook it up down at turn one. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think my best plan now is probably try and take the hard tyres and just see how far we can take them into the Grand Prix and kind of just hope that we get a safety car or something like that a bit later on in the GP. I mean, it's annoying as well it's on that side of the wing because that's probably the more important side around a circuit like this as well. But, yeah, it's around the I mean, We got down the inside. It was only very, very minute contact. I'm surprised it did any damage. But clearly, yeah, just trying to turn in on it um, more than I expected him to. And, well, we are the one that seemingly has paid the price. You can see how much time we lose almost instantly there. It's definitely costing us too much at the moment. And, again, we've got a World Championship buffer over Verstappen. I, I think that might come down, though, today. The pits then will come at the end of lap three. How far can the hard compound tyre go around this venue? Oh, 36 miles an hour 
on pit lane entry. I couldn't have nailed that more if I wanted to. Uh, but yeah, he's going to be a slow stop then. Uh, so we try and make our way back out the pit lane. I mean, yeah, Verstappen's got a huge lead. Even Perez. Go, go, go. That was a fantastic stop. Faster than we were expecting. Yeah, even Perez seems to have shown up this weekend and has got a bit of pace in that second Red Bull car. I don't believe we've up seen him get a podium now. this get year. If I damage the wing again then, I think I might just retire on the spot. Please say we haven't. No, I think we're good. Why, why are these tyres warm? I thought these were a completely... I swear they said it was a new set of tyres. How have they got... Oh, it's because I've rubbed up against the wall, isn't it? Ignore me. Let's just try and get some laps under our belt. The gap to Vesti. 23 seconds. This looks like Lando Norris has made an error somewhere. But let's ride them board then with Lando Norris. He makes his way through the first sector. It's actually not his mistake there. Fernando Alonso runs wide up the corner and actually just completely cuts in on the McLaren driver there. So Norris now, that's how he's gone and lost half his front wing in this Grand Prix there. And you can just see as he makes his way in towards the next couple of corners, just cannot quite adjust to the line he needed there. Just maybe thought he's got a bit more in that car than he did. Runs wide out over the grass there. We'll have to wait for every other car to go by him. And that's how Norris dropped pretty much to the rear of the field. Well, I know their soft compound tyres will start to fall off over the next few laps. But the fact that we can't even go quicker uh, than Joe Granu or Fred Vesti here at the moment kind of says a lot about just how much the deficit is between the softs and the hard compound tyre. We need to get a bit of an undercut. Try and springboard ourselves back up the uh, race order. But honestly, for us, in a race like today, with a lack of pace okay, this mate, car's got anyway... ...track in front of us, and let's make the best of it. So please make this next one a very fast lap. I love it when Mark talks over me. Um, but yeah, in a race like this at the moment, with a car like this, we, we basically need a safety car or a red flag to give us any kind of real opportunity. We've got yellows again. This Lando Norris is having a disaster here. I mean, he's losing time every single lap so i think he's either got like half a front wing or much more sinister problems than that but yeah we should close in on the mclaren pretty quickly i don't get why he hasn't boxed well i'm sure he's not going to do it this time around because i'm going to say about it but yeah norris every single time he goes through this next right hander he seems to run wide and almost bin it of course he doesn't <laughs> every lap for about the last four we've had yellow flags through there and of course the one time i'm near him Lando Norris doesn't make the mistake, but I mean, we're still going well over two seconds a lap quicker than him. We just need to try and get round him in the quickest time possible. I mean, it's through these fast sweepers in Sector 2 that Lando Norris loses most of the time. See, through the first part there, he just, oh, I mean, he's hanging onto that car through there. You can see it lifting up over the kerbs. And he has got that side of the wing, but yeah, he's lost pretty much the entirety from the other side of it. I don't get why McLaren haven't boxed him in this Grand Prix, and it seems like it's yet another weekend of what if for Lando Norris this season. Of course, did take that win back in Albert Park. Nice I apologise. I've been saying that one wrong for so many races ever since then. For some reason, I had in my head uh, that it was George Russell that took the win there. Uh, but yeah, Lando Norris, he could have been a world championship threat had things gone his way, but they okay, just don't seem ahead. to. We've got yellows. We've got yellows. Come on. Something, anything. Safety car, red flag. Anything to bring us back into the Grand Prix. It's Daniel Ricciardo. Let's ram wide down to that first corner. Is he breaking down? Yes, he is. Ricciardo out of the Grand Prix. And I don't think we're going to get anything for it, though. That is so annoying. I mean, we're going to gain a freebie. Not that I'm too invested in that. But, oh, that could have been a safety car. That could have been so useful. We've got more yellows. We've got more yellows. That's got to be Lando Norris behind us. Who's made a bit of an error as we're just starting to see a few cars into the pit lane. So they've still got a fair old way to go on mediums. as Gasly uh, and I believe that's Yuki Tsunoda in. They were both inside that top 10. Both had a really good qualifying effort. I mean, look how far ahead of me they're going to be. They're already making their way out of the pit lane. I've barely crossed the pit lane entry line. Okay, I mean, clear. So what is Lando Norris doing further behind? And please just do something to bring out a safety car. He's breaking down. I think Norris here is out of the Grand Prix then. And information on Norris. Okay, it looks like the problem's terminal. They're retiring the car. How is that not a dangerous location? He's on the inside of the banking. 
through the final couple of turns. Surely that's a safety car. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Lando Norris there. He's on the inside of the banking. Easily, someone could run into him there. As surely we're going to be out ahead of Joe Guanyu by a comfortable margin. Okay, Not as comfortable as I would like. But, yeah, I mean, we're, we're no longer running in last place then in this Grand Prix, which I guess is good. But points are still a long way away. There we go, Fred Vesti, one of the last cars then into the pit lane alongside Ollie Behrman. I mean, Sauber, yeah, just don't have the pace to keep up with anybody else. That should explain why we're already back ahead of their two cars. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're six seconds behind Ollie. And we might not even have the pace over him. Our well, top runners now are running it sub one minute tens here. I haven't even done a lap time under the 111 mark. And I certainly don't think this one's going to be that either. So we're running about a second and a half a lap slower than some of those guys with the DRS and things like that. It is still Red Bull versus Aston Martin at the front. Nice work. That's why I love working with you. Smashed it. All we can hope for is that the medium tyres fall off the cliff towards the end of the afternoon. I mean, yeah, we still need so many places. Well, as we're about to get to two-thirds distance then in this Grand Prix, I have still got it set up. So if we get a safety car or anything like that, uh, then soft tyres are ready to go. The team are aware of that as well. But a bit like IRL Formula 1, this doesn't seem that there's any safety cars anymore inside this series. Like I said, I've got no idea how the Lando Norris one was in the safety car. Our lap times are staying fairly consistent still on these hards. Pretty much every lap I've done has been a 1 minute 11. But that's not going to be quick enough. Well, I'm tempted to get strategic here towards the end of the afternoon. Red Bull, of course, is still one of our biggest title rivals. And Sergio Perez currently has got fastest lap of the Grand Prix. And, well, we obviously saw that bit of controversy in Singapore uh, where Red Bull, maybe or maybe not, uh, used V-Carb as a buffer to try and claim that fastest lap off Orlando Norris. I'm going to leave it a few more until we get sort of lap 33, lap 34. And, you know, unless something else has happened prior to that. Um, but, yeah, I think we might just try and snooper away fastest lap bonus point. Uh, but, annoyingly, that'll probably mean we finish this Grand Prix in last. Well, I apologise that this has ended up being one of the most boring races I think we've ever done inside this series. Is, is the time of warning light on? How on earth have we done, how have we done that much wear to the left-hand side tyres? It must be right up towards the temperature window, so... I guess it's a good job then that we are going to try and pit before the end of this race. But you know, if you exclude that little mishap through the final corner, finally looks like the hard tyres now have got the pace over the mediums. Not that I think we've got enough time to close in on Behrman and Albon anyway. Um, but yeah, we are going to try and dive into the pit lane pretty soon. I'm going to try and put on that fresh set of the soft compound tyres there. And Sergio Perez, I want to try and beat your fastest lap. Well, I think, yeah, looking at it, even in a perfect world, we could have maybe got ourselves up into P5, but I don't think we ever had the pace to compete with the Red Bulls or the Aston Martins this weekend, so maybe don't view it as we're losing 25 points. Maybe view it as we're only sort of losing 8 or 10. I think we always knew, even looking at Leclerc's pace, this circuit was going to be a horrible one for us. It was one of the last tracks we really struggled at as well. Uh, last season in this series as a team. Uh, so yeah, this track just okay, does not suit ahead. the Ferrari. Uh, somehow I've gone green in sector one on these wrecked tyres and immediately hit the grass. Oh, no. No, hang on to it, please. Don't want to bin it this late on. Thank you. Well, gather it up. Ish. Oh, we've got yellows. We've got yellows. Come on, give a safety car, please. Sauber, gone for a spin. It's uh, Joe Guan Yu that's done it. So we're almost joining him on the exit of the very next corner. I mean, he's going to get going again. Don't think we're going to get anything for it. As we'll try and slow our car down into the pit lane. Nice and easy on the entry there. And again, just can't seem to get anything to go our way this afternoon. We might be about to get lapped okay, uh, by Verstappen. The Perfect job from you and the crew there, mate. We're delighted with that. Well, I've spoke about before on this game about how many battles we seemingly end up having with Fred Vesti. This one I might be about to lose. Stops, so, yeah, he's basically lost himself an entire pit stop in the space of one sector. Uh, so we're, we're still not in last. Well, come on then. Let's try and go for a flying lap around this circuit park Zandvoort then. It's been a tough old afternoon. But if we could just try and snooker away one point from Red Bull, that would be quite nice there. Purple through the final sector to get the lap going. 
And we'll break about 75 meters out from turn one. Third gear on the entry. Roll it up towards that curb on the X there. Use a little splash of battery before you flick it in. Sixth gear almost completely flat out. Through turn two, just allow the car to run up towards that curb on the exit. Be careful you don't let it run too wide there. As though Guan Yu now getting blue flags to the staffing behind him. That corner completely flat when you're on a fresh set of tyres and low fuel. It's completely flat as well, obviously, in qualifying. And then tip it in fourth gear through the next corner. A little bit of understeer. Just try and hug the apexes through these next couple of turns. They're nice and fast on the exit. Get that power down. Use a bit of battery through this rather odd DRS zone. Guess where else are you going to put a second one in around this circuit there? Through the stadium, just use that curb, lean on it as best as you can and then you just got two more corners to go fifth gear through the first one completely flat through the second use all of your remaining batteries you make your way up towards the line and it is going to be a 1089 there fastest lap done that was almost as quick as we managed in qualifying well rounding the final corner then about to start the last lap of the dutch grand prix i think yeah having nailed that pit stop a little bit earlier we could have potentially okay, closed up to fred vesti but, yeah, Mark there seemingly way more hyped about this one than I have. As Max Verstappen at the final corner, he's going to win yet again here at the Dutch Grand Prix. And will immediately slash our advantage at the top of the table from 33 points all the way down to 8. Is the Dutchman going to finally get Red Bull back to the top of the Formula 1 world there? Sergio Perez will join him on the podium. I believe it's Fernando Alonso, though, in P2. So, again, another huge haul of points coming for the Spaniard, but we know we got a few tracks that should hopefully suit us in the next few rounds there. Monza, Baku, both very high speed. Singapore as well is a track that just seems to work really nicely for me inside F124. So hopefully this one is going to be a bit more of an outlier for us. Zanvoort and Hungary, I always hate towards the end of the European leg of the Formula 1 season. Through the final corner though, Ocon, you absolutely screwed me today, sir. But as we try and round our way through, we, we didn't really have the pace to fight anyway. This Ferrari car here has been pretty terrible. Out of the final corner for the final time, Max Verstappen takes the win. And you could really tell today just how much of a factor the home race advantage was. Not only did they have the energy from the crowd, but they also knew every millimetre of this track. That's what the home race advantage means. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They've performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. Well, there we go then. Max Verstappen takes the win ahead of Alonso there. And I didn't notice it, but Perez completely bottled it right towards the end of the GP there. So that means Stroll ended up in third. George Russell, ninth to fourth in the end. I think he's my driver of the day. Ahead of Perez, Sonoda, Gasly. I mean, look at that. Leclerc, slower than an Alpine and a Haas this weekend. Goes to show just how bad the car really was there. Ocon ahead of Carlos Sainz there. Rounding out your top 10. Mercedes didn't walk away with a point. We only walked away with four as a team. So it really was a disastrous afternoon there. With Norris and Ricardo, the two drivers that failed to see the chequered flag. That means in terms of the championship, like I said, the gap at the top cut down to just eight points there. And Alonso only 37 back as well. If the staff and I tangle at any point, we could easily see the Spaniard there get himself into the fight as well there. Um, still, obviously, just Fred Vesti yet to score a point this campaign. The gap for the, in the constructors as well there. We've got a 52-point lead over Aston Martin. So, yeah, Red Bull and the Claren, I, I must admit, I did think they were a little bit closer than they appear to be. But, yeah, really not a race to write home about for us. Thank you all so much for watching, nonetheless. And we'll be back early next week as we return to the big one. The one we desperately want to win. It's time for the Italian Grand Prix.